What is the most precious resource in your life? Well, if you are like I am, your most precious resource is time. And according to all the recent studies that have been done lately, adults in America and Canada and other countries value time ahead of money in almost every instance. Now, as a result of what we've talked about in our previous sessions, with the fact that if you change your internal world, you change your external world, one of the things that begins to well up inside of you is impatience. If you believe that if you do change your internal programming, your external world will change to conform with it, then you're probably in a hurry to change that internal programming. And in this session, we're going to talk about how you can bring about rapid and permanent internal programming change. We call this session software for the brain. Now, I don't know a lot about computers, but I do know this. I do know that a computer has a certain amount of utility as a piece of hardware, but what makes a computer work are the programs that you run in it. And the more sophisticated and complex and productive the programs, the more valuable is the computer. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take the things that we talked about in terms of mental programming, visualization, affirmation, and so on, and we're going to combine them into a series of techniques that you can use to multiply or to speed up the process at which your new thoughts and ideas are accepted by your subconscious mind and then go to work and attract them into your reality. And the first technique we're going to talk about is what I call written programming technique. It's one of the simplest of all and yet it is so powerful that it's almost scary. Again, I've said this to many audiences but I'll say it to you, is that if you just practice this one technique it will be worth 10 times the time and price of this program. If it's all you learn at this one technique, it will have an astonishing difference on your results. There's a Bible phrase that says, without dreams and visions, people perish. You've got to have something to go for that inspires the heart and the soul. Dream. From the children of Sanchez, it says, take the crumbs from starving soldiers, they will die. Take the bread from hungry children, they will cry. But without dreams, we all will die. You've got to dream. Don't lose your dream for yourself, for your future, for your family. The dreams of love and enterprise and travel and doing things, becoming something unique on your journey here. Don't lose your dream. Do some dreaming. That's a long-range goal. You've got to have those. When I first learned about this and applied it some years ago, I couldn't believe how effective it was. And all it requires to use is discipline plus one of these. This is what I use. Like a spiral notebook. It costs here $1.99. Walgreens Drugs. All it has is line pages. And what you do is you use this to write and rewrite your goal. It's very simple. You buy one for $1.99 and you use this as the basis of written programming technique. Let me explain to you how it works. Written programming technique is based on the fact that we learn or take in information three ways. We take in information auditorily. In other words, we hear the information or we speak the information. We take it in visually. We see the information and we take it in kinesthetically as we feel the information. Now, any one of these is a good way of learning, or if you like, bringing in information to the unconscious mind. However, the more of them you can combine simultaneously, along with some of the other mental principles and programming techniques that we've talked about, the more rapidly the information is accepted. Sometimes, if you combine information in the right way, it's accepted instantaneously as a permanent change in your unconscious programming. Written programming technique is based on this, as are some of the other programs. Close your eyes after you've rewritten your goal. Close your eyes and visualize your major goal or goals of the day as accomplished. Visualize them as a reality. What would they look like? Now, a very valuable thing to do, by the way, is cut out clippings from magazines and books and put them in your notebook so that you can actually look at a picture. Do you want to earn, own a brand new car or a beautiful house or something like that? Well, then get a picture of it and make a very clear picture so when you write out the goal, you can look at the picture and then close your eyes and feed that picture into your subconscious mind. And then the third part, which is most important, is imagine the feeling of pleasure you would have. Imagine the feeling of pleasure you would have if you already owned it. Just imagine 
that it is already a reality. The way that you imagine that it's a reality is imagine that you are on a path toward your goal and your goal is on a path toward you and that there is a predestined time when you are ready and it's ready, when everything is ready, that you and the goal will meet. And that you cannot speed up the time. You can't make it go faster and you can't make it go slower. But what you can do is continually repeat the picture and the feeling and the description over and over again. And at exactly the right time and place, it will meet. Someday you'll probably write me a letter and you'll tell me how remarkably this has worked in your life. Because it's worked remarkably in my life and the life of many other people. Now the second point, and let, before we go on with this, let me give you a key point. It's called the law of relaxation. The law of relaxation is one of the most important mental laws. Well, the law of relaxation simply says this, that in the physical world, if you want to drive a nail, the harder you hit it, the more physical effort or energy you put behind it, the faster you accomplish something in the physical world. If you want to drive a car faster, you step on the gas, which causes the engine to work harder and propels it forward. However, in the mental realm, it's exactly the opposite. The law of relaxation says that in all mental working, effort defeats itself. In all mental working, effort defeats itself. Think like this. First of all, visualize the perfect outcome. Visualize the perfect outcome. In other words, visualize if, if you could script what was coming up, the interview with your boss, the sales presentation, so visualize the perfect outcome. In other words, the perfect outcome for a discussion about a raise would be the boss giving you the raise. The perfect outcome of a sales conversation is the person signing the sales order. The perfect outcome of a job application is getting a job. In this case, my friend's situation, his perfect outcome was a standing ovation. So he visualized a standing ovation. That's when he programmed into his mind, saw the entire audience rising to their feet in a standing ovation at the end of the talk. Then affirm the visualization. In other words, it could be as simple as this talk goes beautifully or this talk is extremely successful or I feel absolutely perfect going into this talk or this talk is a complete success. In other words, give and affirm any event of importance, long term or short term, what top performers do is they recall and relive excellence. They recall and relive excellence. In other words, they think of the last time that they engaged in a performance like this and the satisfaction that they had, the pleasure that they had, the feeling of an excellent performance. And they take that feeling. It's almost like they have a screen here. And here is the screen. You take a split screen. And on this side of the screen, you recall the last time you did this in an excellent fashion. And on this side of the screen, you imagine the upcoming event. And then when you get this perfectly clearly in your mind, and you can see it with perfect clarity, that last clamp, that last success, the last sale that you closed, the last interview that went well, the last successful party or meeting or social engagement, then you transfer this into the new situation that's upcoming, and you transfer the feeling and the experience, and you overlay the two so that as you anticipate the upcoming experience, you combine it with the feelings of success and pleasure and joy of the previous excellent experience. What that does is it programs the subconscious mind for you to go into that experience and engage in the same words, actions, and behaviors you, that got you the result of success and winning the last time. Now, what is the difference between winners and losers? Major difference between winners and losers. Can you imagine what it is? Winners versus losers. It's simply this is that we all engage in mental rehearsal. You, me, everybody. The difference between winners and losers is this, is that prior to every event, upcoming event, losers think of the last time they went into an experience like this and it didn't work out. They think of their previous failures. They vividly imagine and think about how embarrassed, humiliated, unsuccessful, how badly they felt, and the losers relive and recall failure and poor performance. The winners insist upon reliving and recalling excellence and success. So you can tell if you're destined to be a winner or a loser simply by looking at what you think about in each upcoming event. And if you just make the decision right now to think about what you desire, ask yourself, am I thinking about what I want to happen or am I thinking about what I'm afraid will happen? Remember, the natural tendency is to think about what you're afraid of, not what you desire. So force your mind using the law of substitution 
take your mind off of what you fear and refuse to entertain it. There's a beautiful technique that I learned many years ago. Whenever you start to think about something that's causing you to be upset or anxious or, or tense, just say this word very, very loud to yourself. Say, stop. Stop. It's very much the same as knocking the side of a record player and jerking the needle off the record player or slamming on a tape recorder or shouting at a person who's saying something. Just say, stop. And what it will do is temporarily it will stop your mind. And as it stops your mind, then switch your attention onto what you desire and insist upon thinking about what you desire. Every single time you find your thoughts drifting back to what you're afraid of, say stop and get your mind onto what you desire. Here's a very simple a uh, superior human being keeps their mind on what they want. The superior human being stops the negative thought. The superior human being concentrates on excellent performance. Now, somebody will say, well, I've never done it before. How can I concentrate? Or how can I recall and relive excellent? Easy, in your imagination. You can pretend and imagine that you've done this before. Pretend that you've already succeeded at this. Think about how you would act if you were a superb success in this area. Walk as though you were a success. In neuro-linguistic programming, they find that there is a physiological state or way of walking, talking, and acting that is consistent with every emotional state. And that if you walk and talk and act the same way you would if you felt confident, as we said earlier, you will actually feel the feelings of confidence that go with the behavior. Very important. Now, here's another technique. It's called standard programming technique or standard affirmation technique. And this technique is done with cards, uh, index cards, and or you can use this, uh, a, a series of goals on a piece of paper. Very powerful technique. What you do with this is that, here's the steps to standard affirmation techniques. You set your goal. You can set 10 to 15 goals. Your subconscious mind can work to 10, on 10 to 15 goals at a time. Of course, you have to have your goals in priority, but you don't have to worry about that. About 10 to 15 goals. Number two is you take twice daily, morning and evening. Twice daily, morning and evening, you take some time off where number three, you can be with no interruptions. And then you write out your goals, again in the form of positive, present tense, personal affirmation. Okay, goal as positive, present tense, personal affirmation on cards. Now many people advise that you use index cards so that you can slide the cards back and forth like this. Um, and just put one on top of the other and write your goal in very, very large, clear letters so that the subconscious mind can see the goal with crystal clarity. And then you sit down with the goals and you read the goal.